Bedford Stuyvesant, but it could be Harlem or the South Bronx or any of the poor neighborhoods of the city. Some good buildings line these streets, but many, too many, are burning. Neighborhoods as well as lives are at stake. A special breed of men, such as those in Ladder Company 102 and Engine Company 209, are here to carry out a job whose very essence is danger. The danger of fires, the danger of false alarms, the dash to the emergency that doesn't exist. What follows is 24 hours in the lives of these men, guardians of a neighborhood being devastated by fire, a major cause of urban decay. has been signaled to Brooklyn headquarters. Engine 209 presses through traffic to the alarm box where someone has called for help. It's Friday, 3 p.m., and at the alarm box, there's not a sign of smoke or trouble. It's the beginning of a weekend, a time for trouble. It's apparent that it was a malicious call for alarm. We so notified the dispatcher. False alarms, part of the routine, always costly and sometimes dangerous if a company is delayed in answering an alarm where people are burning to death. While engine 209 heads back to the firehouse, the other half of this firefighting unit, ladder 102, has responded along with another company to a call for help in an apartment over a record shop. A small fire, but a tragic blow to the woman who lived there. What does she do now? She may find a temporary place to live, but her old home is gone. Landlords in this neighborhood tend to neither rebuild nor repair burnt out apartments. Letter 102 is half a dozen men plus an officer. Jimmy Spillane passed the lieutenant's exam. He earns about $4,000 more per year and he gives the orders but he's one of the men, sharing the work and the danger. Fly to 102 to Brooklyn, okay? Uh, 102 is 10 8 from box 925. 10-8, they're ready to go again. Seventy-five companies serve New York City. Budget cuts are reducing the number of companies to the point where firemen believe that fire protection is becoming dangerously thin. Ladder 102 and Engine 209 are out responding to alarms on an average of 20 times a day. House Watch gets a message from headquarters and passes it on. Trucks go through stoplights, ride in the left lane against oncoming cars. Collisions are always a possibility. But the drivers of these two companies have answered 15,000 alarms in two and a half years without a single accident. Each man has a job. The latter man goes to the roof. He works the top of the fire, a risky place to be. Lieutenant Spillane gives orders. Vent the building, get rid of the heat and smoke. In any fire, even a minor one, the men worry about smoke more than heat. There are still many false alarms, and on a rare occasion, perhaps on a hot summer night, a rock will be tossed at a passing fire truck. But attitudes have improved. This neighborhood is in trouble and knows it can depend on the fire department. Returning from one fire, the men get ready for another, always uncertain as to when it might come. Tony, you got some memory? Huh? Memory talk, please. Oh, yeah, it's on the front seat, man. 
Before the tools have been cleaned, there's another fire. A small one in a sealed, vacant building in the cellar. Walk to the wall. Get the face out further out. Hello, Frank. Yes, right. Lieutenant Spillane prepares to inspect. All right, go ahead, Dad, Hank. Well, there's, this is a vacant building. It's boarded up except for the basement. And somebody evidently uh, started some rubbish on fire down there. Our cushions and uh, some wood debris. Unfortunately, we got here on time and uh, it didn't extend. But this would have been very difficult because it's all tinned up. And we would have to uh, open all the tin up had the fire extended in here. It would have been very tough for operation. And this, see this square on here? That indicates that the building is a vacant building. If we have a slash through it, a one line through it, it means that it's fire damaged. And uh, if there's an X in it, it's a building that we shouldn't go into. Is this, in other words, the building has been damaged so much due to previous fires that it's in danger, would endanger us too much to go in it. covers a man with ashes and soot, but he can't do more than wash his face. He must be clothed at all times. There's never an end to talk about business. Recent fires, past fires, any fires. If the fire would have got out in that hallway, the people would have been in trouble. And then most of them, because most people choose that means of egress. They have bars on the windows and stuff, right? They usually don't, uh, a lot of times that's the only way they really got to get out. You know, when we were supposed to get those people out and they wouldn't go, and, and they yelled down and tell us, you know, get them out and you come down and you try and get them out and they don't get. And if that fire would have communicated over, we would have had some trouble, you know. How do the men feel about working in this neighborhood? Well, I feel I, I like working here. I guess it's a challenge and you get the more satisfaction, I would say, than because you see people that don't, don't have much to start with and whatever you can do to help them, is, it's, it, it's, good, it's great self-satisfaction to get out of working down here. It's tough, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it gets, it's a challenge. I originally came down you know, to a busy area to get some experience. You know, when I was young in the job. And I got to really like it, you know, the fact that it was busy and uh, it just never left. We've been here for quite a while. The problem they made is, I think, a study. They asked the people about city services, and I think the fire department was the only one that they gave a plus to, that the people uh, knew that if they pulled that box in two minutes, somebody would be there and, and help them. So yeah, they seem to relate to us more so than a lot of the other agencies, and they know, they know, guarantee that somebody's going to be there right away, you know. So we went to one time, we went to a guy, it was like in the little winter, three o'clock in the morning, he had a little leak in his kitchen, so he called us. There he gets a couple of companies out for a leak in the kitchen. As far as variety goes, I, I've been in on uh, deliveries. Like uh, Joe said, uh, they know they get a response. No good. No good. The alarm is signaling another company. The day shift ends. The night shift begins. The 6 p.m. crew will be on until 9 the next morning. Fall out for all four. Fall out for all four. All right, close intervals, four, man. Count off. One, two, three, four. All right. Williams. Here. Kennedy. Here. Michael. Here. Carlson. Here. Chirillo. Here. Ready. Fun. Haley. Here. Dolan. Here. Finnemore. Here. Island. Yeah. Reichel. Yeah. Okay, we'll check the mass, the tools. Uh, Dave, check the source. Okay? Hold on. There's plenty of routine around a firehouse. Checking air for the mask that can keep a man breathing in heavy smoke. Testing the power saw that can cut through steel to rescue the victim of an auto accident. Checks that might prove crucial as the new crew gets itself ready for the night ahead.
night shift of ladder company 102 and engine company 209 are on the job. The engine goes for a short run around the corner to Taffy Place. They've been here before. Vacant buildings are repeated victims of fire. A blaze in the cellar is put out quickly. Meantime, the ladder company is handling a fire in another cellar, this time of an inhabited house. The source of the fire is near the boiler, and men take turns hacking away like miners in a shaft. The engine company is back. They've started dinner, scheduled for 8.30 or thereabouts. Nothing very elaborate tonight. We alternate. We usually alternate. Everybody has a chance cooking, you know. They cook what they want. You know, there's a variety. There's certain guys cooking, you know, I cook certain things, you know, right, you know. Now, being the truck is out right now, you know, I'm just setting in, you know, put it in the oven. So we only eat like 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody chips in. Nobody has a special job. They, uh, they chip in, maybe one guy will cook one time, another will cook another time. And, uh, and uh, we all share it, so it's uh, not that bad. So they say it's togetherness. Okay, listen, uh, just before we go and wash up and eat off. Uh, we'll be back to Ladder 102 is in the house again. Lieutenant Cross points out some dangers in vacant houses to which they may have to return. The back wall of the exposure was out, right? So if we go back, we'll just stay away. Yeah. As much as possible, we'll stay out of the uh, <coughs> that exposure. Also, the cellar of that fire building, yeah. there's a passageway, there's a big yeah. doorway that goes between the fire building and the adjoining building. It takes you right to the adjoining building. Right, so the fire is in the cellar. Also, the floors are right Also, the floors are right There was no way to the roof there either. The stairways were right. down. Right. So we got to make sure we get the And the roof, the roof has collapsed, too, on the... Uh, on the Roofs door. collapse. That's why right. Firemen fall through floors. In this one firehouse, there have been almost 200 injuries in the past year. We asked Lieutenant Cross, does he sometimes experience fear? No, I don't think I do. Uh, I have fear for uh, someone who I feel maybe I couldn't get to, you know, uh, where it's just beyond, you know. That's the only fear I have, that I may not be able to reach somebody in time. That's my only fear. It's a challenge, you know, it's exciting. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I would be in it because the nature of it and the hazards of it, you know, are uh, so great. And if it wasn't for the other things, the excitement, the challenge, and uh, the feeling of satisfaction when you do a good job, when you do save a life, that's what makes it. Debevoise Street. Another company is already there. The building is unoccupied. For sale. How much of it can be saved? Okay, let's go. We'll get 119 up low on here, okay, guys? Lieutenant Cross and his men go to work. All right, Tony, give us a little spin in this. Okay? You can give me a hand over there, yeah, Mike. fire under control and in the hands of ladder 119, Lieutenant Cross has responded to another alarm, bringing his crew back to Taffy Place, into the cellar of a building where a new fire has been started. In the building, Lieutenant Cross has found an amateurish Molotov cocktail. He is certain that the new fire has been set. Uh, what they do is they fill the bottle up with gasoline or kerosene or something of that nature. They'll set it in a different location from where the uh, first fire was, you know, where, where it is bright. So you see the kids playing or uh, some people get enjoyment out of uh, watching fire. Later that evening, there is a second fire at the building that was for sale on Double Boy Street. The building is beyond saving, and now it becomes a danger to the firefighters. 
We uh, have a lot of injuries in vacant buildings. Because they're in bad shape. There are stairs missing, there are holes missing, you know, all these type things. And there's no reason to have them. And it's a frustrating thing to go there and to see a fellow get hurt. Possibly have to leave the job because of a vacant building. The evening meal, somewhat overcooked, is served shortly before midnight. Jaza! We uh, have a term in the job. We're called brothers. And we are like brothers. And I guess it's because we uh, depend on each other so much in tight situations. Uh, out of fire. We're going to depend on each other. If one man isn't doing his job, it could mean somebody else is going to get hurt. And uh, in order to do our job right, we have to work as a team. If we're going to save somebody's life and, and put the fire out, we have to work as a team. Some nights it does get to you for You can have 10, 15 false alarms in a row. Sometimes the same alarm box. Just about get back in the firehouse and you're back out again. It gets to you. It gets to be a nuisance. But each and every time that we go out, we have that one thought in our mind that someone needs help. The rest of the night was a rubbish fire and two false alarms. For ladder 102 and engine 209, a relatively quiet Friday night. Saturday morning at 10.40, an abandoned factory. Its structure is solid, and to firemen, this is reassuring. There will be little danger from collapsing walls or staircases. But smoke builds up quickly. has helped the firefighter. Rapid water is generated by a chemical that permits the water to flow more swiftly. Hoses, therefore, are now lighter than in the past, and the struggle up winding staircases is a little less backbreaking. After the fire, what's it like to be in the midst of it? You, you are gasping. You're choking for air. And uh, your nose is running for you. You can breathe through your nose. Your nose has a tendency to run. And you're forced to breathe through your mouth. And you're really sucking these poisons into you, your system. And you want to do the job as best you can. Because if you don't, you can kind of feel that you let your body down, your brother down. And you want to do whatever you can for him. And so you want to do your best. I've been assigned to uh, Ladder Company 102 now for 13 years. And those 13 years, I had, on many occasions, to uh, be part of a rescue, a joint team rescue effort, and uh, the satisfaction of uh, having a human life, a little boy or a girl respond, when you bring them back personally is, is, uh, is something that goes uh, far beyond any experience that anyone can uh, possibly explain. Responding units acknowledge. Engine 209, ladder 102, 3, 4, 10, 4. Everybody goes. Engine, truck, and chief. Turn out. Fires take lives. The tragedies are reported all too frequently, but not the erosion of buildings and communities. Saturday, 12.35, Box 302, Wythe Avenue and South 9th Street.
building is totally vacant and as you can see totally destroyed and the main uh, hazard here is with the occupied buildings on either side of this a fire like many that occur every day it won't make headlines it's not even newsworthy the excitement is confined to this one block of water is bringing the fire under control, but this weakens the structure, increasing the danger. The square painted on so many buildings here, a mark of doom. A woman reports having seen the youngsters who started the fight. What did you find? Find two kids coming out? No, four making a clubhouse in the building. Yeah. And we think it's such a shame that in we just bring their shame to do it, that we can't have a decent block. And they, where, where is the mother? Why don't they take a kid and bring them to the park somewhere? You got dogs? Why are they making the farmer work overtime? for a little stupidness like they're sitting trying to deal with. No heroic rescues, no lives lost. One fireman is hurt. A few understand the social consequences. One more step downward for the entire neighborhood. Later, Chief Duffy points out two vastly different streets, a short block from each other. These buildings to our right here are vacant. It's evident that there has been fire damage, and these vacant buildings are adjoining an occupied dwelling. These are good buildings. Many of these buildings are structurally sound. And on your right, this building is in a free stage of being demolished and it has been in that unoccupied or vacant condition for three years. That's Vernon, and the one block further over, Willoughby Avenue, we find a block with no vacant buildings. The homeowners, the, all the tenants have gotten together, formed block associations. The houses are painted, maintained. The ownership dictates to a person that you've got to keep it up in order to keep it saleable. Ownership goes hand in hand with pride. Is anything that you own, you take care of more or less. Pride of ownership, having a vested interest, a stake in where one lives, is the fortunate lot of many Americans, but not many who live here in Bedford-Stuyvesant. Burn, baby, burn, used to be the cry here, but it was heard nowhere during the fires of this one day. A community and its firemen seem to be on the same side. The people of this increasingly blighted section of the city and a core of men who are ready to risk their lives day after day. This is E.G. Marshall for New York Illustrated.